Yeah, good. Right, okay. Um, hello, everybody. Welcome to this um, little discussion that I'm going to have with my good friends and colleagues. I'm proud to call them colleagues and friends. And um, we are going to, I'm going to ask them about their particular disciplines, which are very, very interesting. They relate to journalism, even though they are not, well, they are writers, but they tend, what we're going to talk to them about is the way that they um, approach journalism using other sort of art forms and other media, if you like. And um, first of all, can I welcome Alex Alexander Sebley, who's a, a yep. I've, is a, a photographer who's worked for um, many different organisations from the BBC to Brat Travel Guides that has taken him all over the world. I've worked with him on two books about Ivory Coast, two travel books about Ivory Coast. Um, we also have uh, Louis Netta, um, who I've also worked with most recently on a book called Coast of Teeth, which is a book of reportage about English seaside towns. <clears throat> Louis is a reportage illustrator of of note he's been widely published he's also um just written a book an academic book analyzing the the history and conventions of um reportage illustration and um i'm just going to ask them a few questions to get some insights into their technique um i'll ask them a little bit about sort of questions of ethics and how they kind of interact with people when they're in the field which is one of the one of the sort of themes of the course that we've been dealing with and a few other things <clears throat> um we'll try and have a look at their work as we go along um behind me my background is a very fetching illustration by louis louis going to show you some more alex was i don't know if you've got any photos to hand that we can bring in later um i I, I might be able to find some um, shortly. But can I just start with you, Alex, just asking you, and I'll ask you the same question, Louis, in a moment, just sort of kick off sort of quite straightforwardly. When you when you go into the field, <clears throat> and both of you, that's exactly what you do. You know, you aren't, you know, you go out into the world and you you record it in your own ways. But when Alex, when you go into the field, what are you and you and you, you know, you've got potentially unlimited sort of things to take photos of right mm. you have to choose something you have to choose something that is um, important to you and will you know m resonate with your readers or the people who are going to see your photos how do you kind of make that decision what sort of images what sort of features of the world do you are you looking for that will make a good photograph as a, as a sort of photo journalist um well, I guess it's about being present um, in the moment. Um, a lot of it, I think, with photography is that it's more, um, you know, it's one of those things you, you sort of see it first and then react. So it's sort of being present, being being in the moment. And, um, you know, uh, I think there's a lot of that sort of, it's more sort of about in some ways it's more about you than you know the camera just happens to sort of be an extension of you sorry someone just sending me a message i will turn that off uh yeah so i think i think the camera is more an extension you know of you um so you're you're seeing something um you're reacting to your surroundings and um and then it's you know time to take a picture and uh I think it's sort of often with me I felt like uh it's just waiting for that moment you know there's a sort of uh there's a um a split between looking down the lens all the time and and observing what's around you and I think you have to sort of make that balance. So I, I'm always looking, maybe when I'm looking down a camera, I'm looking for that moment where it seems to sort of pop. And I can't really maybe explain that better, but it's sort of, you'll see a moment where, I mean, I guess I I, I think of, uh, you know, it's, I sort of draw upon films or 
or um, themes and, and try and find that special moment. But you can never know. I mean, that's the thing. It depends. If you're taking film, um, you can't look back in that moment. You can't maybe readdress. And you know, I like to take film. So with digital, it's easier to just snap everything. And and often, you know, I do. I mean, I take digital and film as well, analog film, that is. So but I think... Um, you know, with digital, you can sort of machine gun fire and get and try and get every moment. You know, literally, you can take thousands of pictures. I think with 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 maybe with film, it's a different approach. It's a slower, almost meditative. I mean, if there's lots of action going on, um, the trick is is to, you know, you have to be fast and you have to react to moments um and uh i mean i i don't know how uh, you know that picture that famous vietnam picture i don't know if you want to talk about that tom i mean you're going to edit By all it. means yeah i mean any examples we well, you know that famous vietnam picture with the guy the uh the gen the um what's his name the i think he was a colonel or a, he was on the america he was with the americans He's a Philippine colonel and he finds an insurgent and he shoots he shoots the guy in, in the head. You know, the really famous one. Yeah, I, I'm just, I, I'll try and get it up, shall I, if we don't get full felt yeah. copyright um, <laughs> laws, which uh, can happen. So the way that pit, when I've seen an interview with that guy who took that picture, and I guess the interesting thing about that picture is it's one of the most famous pictures in the world. Is that the one? that's the one yeah so when he took it he was he was he was he was the other way around so he was he had his back to this scene and it happened so fast and he just happened to turn around and he took i think took three photographs but it was you know he, um there was no time you know so he's just take 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 and when he got back he realized that he caught this um very disturbing um picture and it actually the bullet is actually in his head at the moment of that being taken apparently uh it's right. he's already fired but that's how quickly he had to, he sort of reacted and i think like you know you're you, you know you're a sort of camera yourself you're seeing the action so then the camera is just trying to make is trying to record that moment and i think a lot of great photography is about but first and foremost, maybe about yourself and getting involved in the action. And and it's it's a sort of meeting, you know, like if you're taking portraits, it's very much about relaxing the person or or, you know, sort of your own um, your own personality and being able to sort of um, get in there and 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 uh, get great pictures and make someone feel comfortable or make someone react and then and then you take the picture so it starts with you and then ends with a, a picture if you like and i think that's sort of what photography is um if you you know really i think really good photographers are good at that um that's it's really sort of staying fresh you know i think keeping yeah, that's really interesting, that, that process where you yeah you start with yourself and your sort of humanity i suppose and your feelings and your yeah and then you kind of move out from that i mean louis does that sort of resonate with you from the point of view of being an illustrator you know someone who goes out to the field and you know is that the way that you kind of approach the subject or yeah i mean i think that's a really good way of kind of putting it because you kind of orient um your approach to the subject based around your developed world view essentially um yeah. And then when you choose, you choose the subjects because there's something about them that's compelling. Uh, and so that so that's a personal choice. I mean, that's one of the interesting things about this idea and the debates around the photograph being objective and the drawing being subjective or or something. You know, the photograph is highly subjective as well and and problematic and polluted by a by a whole range of different interests on the part of the the photographer. But what we are seeing, though, as Alex says, which is right, you're, you're sort of seeing an individual's 
choice, an individual's slice of reality or, or um, yeah, a sort of snatched out of fluid reality, this image. In the, in the case of the a photograph, it's, you know, the, the result of a mechanical procedure. And then in, in the drawing, it's literally fabricated. It's, it's made. And because of fluid reality, a lot of it is made and, and the details of the drawing are furnished through memory, really. Um, mm. But like, like a kind of liminal memory, you kind of, you, you see these characters. I mean, one interesting example of that was when I was in um, Nairobi and I looked and there was a guy sitting in the kind of median in this highway and it's like the driving there is a kind of a bit of a contact sport practically and there's this guy kind of sitting in this median and he was surrounded by just half um mannequins <laughs> like mannequin bodies but it's just the lower half of these women, like a female mannequin bodies and they were like some of them were on the ground some of them were standing up it was just so bizarre and i i drew that considerably later well probably the same day probably about an hour from the time that i saw it and from my memory of it, it, the drawing felt like it really, it really captured it really well. And it was just kind of, it's quite interesting the way I think, and I think photographers too trust, they very much kind of trust their instincts in a way which is very intimate. I think probably the more you take photographs or the more you draw, the more you become this kind of instinctive machine, re recording machine. And it's, it's, I don't know. I I sort of feel like it's it's far less technical and much more um, some kind of weird nervous system connecting to vision, and it, it just seems to kind of come out. But the more you can kind of um, fire that that up, but yeah, I, th I think it it's inevitably comes from the individual though. Yeah, but I think um, in going, I mean, I think yeah, seeing someone's humanity or or lack of it is a <clears throat> is a good way of of putting it but I do think there is something I've noticed about my own experience with photography is that in some ways less is more you know let the sort of the better photographer I think doesn't take maybe thousands of pictures they sort of almost it's looking for that like I'm saying that sort of moment and I think the camera can also it can also divorce you or, or separate you from the action so you can also be sort of you're not actually experiencing you're sort of looking down the lens and and there's a sort of almost a, a a wall between you or something you know glass sort of between you so you're sort of there's a sort of thing i think between experience and then the business of taking pictures and i think you know like if I take too, when I was working a lot, if I took too many pictures, I felt like I lost something a bit. I lost, the, you know, they call it the eye in photography. You got to have the eye. <clears throat> and I think sometimes I think like sort of almost um, it's knowing when to sort of, I mean, maybe I'm getting philosophical a bit, but it's knowing when to sort of almost sit back and, and do the, do the sort of, meeting and 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 have and be in the moment rather than than taking pictures because actually once you're looking down that lens your field of view is actually limited so you're not seeing you know something could be happening over there and you'll be missing it or something so it's almost like just sitting and uh, you know thinking of it almost as scenes in a you know what 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 is happening and how can i best record it what angle what where do I but you can't know obviously you cannot predict what's going to actually happen but I think it's sort of there is something about being stuck in being able to sort of be in the moment and part of that I think is maybe doing less not more but that's maybe more of a philosophical that was my feeling is I became bad when I was taking more pictures almost rather than being good by taking sort of less but taking better pictures by being able to sort of feel the moment, if you like, or be in the moment, and and do you think it seems like everyone's a photographer nowadays because of social media and everyone's got a phone on their camera and the amount of photographic content on Instagram and Facebook and you know elsewhere is huge, isn't it? I mean, do you think that kind of mass production of, as it were, of photos is a kind of part of the problem you were 
alluding to there that it kind of some of the power <clears throat> lost i don't think it's a problem I, I i just think yeah there are people who are recording i mean if, you know photography is a funny one you know is it an art or is it a you know just a process or i think like there is a difference between you know maybe one maybe a photographer might go the whole life and only take you know five or six really genuinely great pictures really be in that moment but that takes a lot of hard you know that you know like real photographers you know they'll go out into the world and i mean there's a guy i I, sorry i can't remember his name but there's a guy i think he's they've just done something and he he's traveling around africa and trying to photograph the last of um these communities and you know he's really sort of you know it's a lot of legwork and 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 time and i think but also you know the best photographer could be someone just with their phone you know in you know somewhere in their house you know in their community in in the uk and just it's all about intimacy maybe and 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 access so i don't know if like um you know phone photography or people with lots is really i don't don't really think of it that way as being a, a problem but i do think you know maybe it's sort of you know it, there's a there maybe there is a real gulf between you know generally like a really great photo and something that's maybe more art than the mechanical sort of pictures and 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 i think there is a difference and it's being able and maybe it's recognizing that difference and um you know i mean a lot of this maybe just happens you know people people take you know people may you know lots of people just record their lives and um sorry i'm getting a bit lost no, 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 no. <laughs> like, you know what i mean like like i don't think I, th- I think like there's just sort of you know sometimes people you know um you know you have your professional photographers and and that world and then you have everyone else and i and and I think maybe the best pitching can be, you know, um, is is more about that intimacy and and, and knowing your subject maybe. So it's it's those people maybe, you know, depending on what subject. If you if if you you know, I guess on a professional level, um, it's different. You know, a photographer turns up, they have maybe a few hours and they have to record something they may know nothing about or. Yeah. You no, know, they, they're a stranger effectively and then you have someone maybe just a, a kid or something who has a camera who can say more you know maybe a, just on their phone or a throwaway camera who can say more in a, in a picture than than a professional photographer could ever just by simply knowing the subject and being being in it you know and, yeah. and can i can i just i, I i'll ask you this a bit i <laughs> know oh, no, no it's, it's all good i just want to make sure we we you know get yeah few questions but i'll ask you this in a moment alex but i mean louis i just wondered about <clears throat> when you <clears throat> when you go into the field <clears throat> and you're doing that you know you're you're looking for intriguing things to to draw um have you what sort of difficulties or even dangers have you encountered and what kind of precautions do you take or, or or should one take in those sorts of situations? I mean, you've traveled in, you know, mentioned earlier places like, you know, sub-Saharan Africa and, you know, all over the world, in fact. And what if you just sort of share some of that with us? I, I think kind of the the thugs I encountered in Walthamstow were possibly um the the most threatening characters that I've I've actually ever encountered, if I'm honest. Um so that- in- England, yeah, <laughs> yeah, and that was in the uh, kind of mid '90s when I, after I graduated university or something and was living there, um, and that's including kind of being in the South Bronx and uh, and being in various different inner city places. But that, that's a whole other story. But I think the main thing is is that when you're drawing, I like the word Alex is saying intimacy. I think is a really good good word, and I think it's a really important um, way of thinking about. And, and sort of access as well. 
those are really really good terms for thinking about how you actually get a good image um and again that's sort of for me i don't know the people that i'm drawing generally speaking but I, the core of it is a sense of kind of humanity um and but for me i i probably am not i'm not this sort of touchy feely um kind of that's not really my orientation to the subject um so in, in a sense the humanity aspect of it is more symbolic so so i i start to see when i'm drawing when i'm in the field i see people as sort of as symbols really they become kind of emblems of of something else but i i really don't i try not to make eye contact i try to not be in anyone's personal space. I try not to make people uncomfortable. Um, when people see me drawing, <laughs> it's a kind of, they always tend to get up and move. Um, they're kind of, they're aware of it, even if they don't, they don't look at me and there's some sort of formal acknowledgement that they're aware that they know that I'm drawing them. They still tend to move. Um, but I've also, I've got really quick at drawing, so I don't really, um, I don't need to be there and laboring the thing the drawings kind of come together in a matter of at the most five minutes really so they they happen pretty quickly so it's a very very quick but that that has that's taken a long time to develop the sort of facility to do that but i mean i think yeah you just um you don't want to you, you don't want to stand out i mean a really interesting speaking of photography james Noctway, i think his name but he was a war photographer and I believe it's a documentary called War Photographer. And he said that he moves like a ghost um, through his sort of around his subjects. I thought that was a really interesting, uh, interesting way of kind of putting it. Um, but that's kind of me, too. I don't really want to be noticed. That's the being noticed is, is that's the worst thing. You just kind of want to be there to almost be two floating eyeballs that nobody can kind of see. <laughs> and then you could just do your drawing and then kind of get out so a lot of it is very surrep surreptitious and I, as you know I, we've talked about before I know somebody who um, draws in arms fairs and this is James Notkway's work yeah it's very powerful work um, who draws in arms fairs and, and she has to be completely hidden when she makes her work yeah and James Notkway actually was was very uh, he was very seriously wounded in Iraq. A uh, grenade was thrown in his um, his uh, Humvee or something. So, but his his work to me is is really powerful. Just really kick sort of hits you in the gut. Really, you, you've never had a kind of ne negative reaction, Louis. To you know, have you ever had someone who really doesn't want to be drawn? Yeah. Well, once this the well, I know a guy in New York who was chased. Um, in a subway because he was the guy caught him drawing he had to kind of jump out in some random st stop but <clears throat> and then the other one funny experience i had or not i mean i was kind of uh at university and i uh i was drawing some woman and then the guy the woman's boyfriend came over to me and kind of threatened me um but i was quite i was kind of crazy back then and i sort of got up and i sort of got in this guy's face and he sort of backed down <laughs> i was just a bit sort of mad but um, but I could show you if you let me share. I could just quickly show you. Yeah, a little... certainly. Let me just um, stop this. And... Do, you, do you just draw from memory then? Pretty much, you don't take pictures, Louis. No, I, I don't work from pictures at all. No, definitely not. But I don't read. It's not re. I sort of see it. It's partially drawn from memory. I do draw from observation as well. Yeah. Um, so I'll show you. This is just stuff I did literally two weeks ago in Prague. So this is very recent. Um, I'm sort of interested. I've been interested in, in drawing kind of homeless people for a very, very long time. Um, and again, there's something also, they're very still, they, they create a kind of interesting sort of shape, you know, as part of the urban fur furniture, there's something so the so it starts with an aesthetic interest, in a sense, but but my interest in sort of homeless people is really you know they're emblematic of a kind of failure of society i mean the amount of wealth that we have in the kind of uh, first world we shouldn't have any people homeless it's an absurdity um so and then there's just and things that are just oddities like this sculpture that had this kind of guy sort of smiling guy with the kind of mustache and then these women sort of pulling up and i realize it's quite a wonky drawing actually but that's it's all right <laughs> 
I love uh, you. I love your work. Oh, thanks. <clears throat> Another, this lady, I really struggled with her and it didn't work because she had a much more interesting face than that. Um, it was, it was tough. But... Fantastic nose, may I say, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, I, I don't know that one. And this is, these are, some of these are sculptures on Charles Bridge. And also it's kind of interesting when you're in a location that's very touristy, like Prague or like New York City or something, you really have to kind of fight against this, all of these other images, a bit like what Alex was talking about with photography. There's kind of, there's so much photography that it kind of disappears. It just becomes kind of meaningless. And then, but the real photographers are the ones that are making kind of something more than just throw away kind of snapshots. But um, but yeah, I mean, I just try to draw something which reflects the place in a kind of interesting way. I mean, even this is sort of about this medieval, think about this medieval character. What was it like, you know? So trying to, you're trying to capture things that are very, sometimes they're very um, kind of thematic and just sort of, and conceptual, or you just have a hunch about something. I like when birds land on statues as well. That's quite fun. You, I love that. Yeah. <laughs> and actually, the, a student of mine is like, oh, that's really funny what you did with your drawing. Like they thought they were putting rabbit ears over the other guy. And I said, no, that's the way that's the way the sculpture actually is. And that's like an old um, religious sign of a blessing when you put the two fingers. I only know that because of my Catholicism, Catholic upbringing. But and then, yeah, just people just just. And this is a very common scene in um, in Prague as well. That when they when they beg sort of for money, they they get in this kind of penitent sort of like really very religious sort of pose, bent down, and it's quite it's just quite remarkable, really. Yeah. Uh, and beer and and then sometimes th actually this was based on a photograph, but when I draw from a photo, I don't I try not to get too tight with it but this was from the communism museum and this is just a picture of a uh, very depleted looking kind of people under stalin's rule um, and this was a this was also from the communism museum this was a guy who was trying to escape uh prague um and was shot and it was and this is snow which i thought also visually is interesting snow and the and the black of just branches and so forth is really makes for an interesting image but I like the, just further to what Alex was saying about less is more. I really love what you've done there with the the snow. Is obviously when you're using only black and white, or you know, it's it's hard to portray snow. But what you've done there is you've just like before you said it was snow. I my I recognised it as snow simply because of the little sort of um, ripples of you know with you know very small marks that kind of suggest that there's that this is a white this is something that's white and <clears throat> someone's lying in it and yeah it's that like you let's say that sort of just the use of very small details to kind of get across uh, a whole kind of scene really yeah, yeah i mean it and it does chime with kind of what picasso said where it said it took him his entire life to draw like a child and then um i mean when he says that he's, he's i think he's really talking about that line is so synthesized, it's so direct, it's saying exactly what you want it to say, just like a child's drawing. They don't fuss around with things. They just say, here's eye, nose, happy, sad, you know, <laughs> it's kind of very direct. But yeah, so anyway, so this is just a- uh... This is great. I mean, it's it's really good um, that you're talking through your work. I mean, I wonder if I've actually got some, I've found some of Alex's photos and I wonder if Alex, you could talk us through sure process behind because i think this is what what you know people are really interested to know about is sort of like you know how you make these sort of decisions the images you choose you i remember this one as being uh featuring in the book i think right yeah yeah i mean i can get some up as well uh, oh well yeah if you probably be better I, these are just online I yeah them. i mean these are the ones that brat chose i think um i mean this one is it's okay is they're actually it's actually been cut I think can you, can you get access to yours more because I'd rather you chose Edited. Them. yeah let me have a look I mean I, I just brought these up in case you know we <laughs> um how do I uh, let me have a look I, I, I've made all participant participants able to share um perhaps in the meantime Louis I could you know sort of talk to you a bit more um about um 
the sort of when it comes to to kind of thinking about who your readers are and who who will be kind of ultimately looking at your drawings and why do you feel that there's something that because you know you're obviously a writer as well so you you understand how you know the power of the written word and um is there something that you feel people can and you know and thinking of this as you know from a sort of journalistic or reportage point of view that there's something that that the you know the reader or the viewer of illustration reportage illustration can learn about a situation a place a, a, a you know a conflict a, whatever it is that's being reported on that they kind of can't get from text or writing oh most definitely i, I yeah. think as well in terms of reportage drawing they kind of work individually but they also work really interestingly as a as a collection which is probably true of of photography as well so that so individually they tell one sort of one aspect of a location and then when you look at them in total it kind of creates this wider picture so in my experience um they the images uh are very distinct but at the same time um they're enclosed in the locale so that's kind of that's how i sort of see them yeah you see that? Yeah, we can, yeah. That's a wild picture. I like that. Can you see it online? I, I don't know if you can see it on the... Yeah, we can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah you're okay. sharing it. So. You're recording. Right, so this is my uh, blog, which isn't very professional looking, but... Uh, That's all right. Pictures on here. I mean, this is like... These are, these are just out and about sort of snapshots. Um, is that a gun that the guy's got? If it was a sort yeah, of... it's a it's a belt, a fake <laughs> belt. But they, they, these these are just my right. film ones. Uh, they're taken on film. Right. Um, <laughs> that's just a guy in Tesco's. Uh, I'll try and don't, don't go too fast. Yeah. These are all. Um, I was trying to do a lot of sort of portraits when we were out in Ivory Coast. Um, oh, there's a nude one, some nude ones. Um, yeah, is any you want to talk about? Well, anything that you, I mean, I think you'd like, uh, do you get a set with? Well, I suppose it's a question for both of you, but I'll start with you, Alex, because you know, perhaps you can talk us through. Do you ever get a sense of people changing their behavior or posing, and then that? Like you were talking about the kind of spontaneity and the sort of naturalness of. Well, I think yeah. I mean, like what Louis, yeah, what Louis was saying was about um, yeah. It's almost sort of going back on what, actually, maybe contradicting what I was saying before is that, yeah, there is a balance between twins. What you're trying to do, I think, <clears throat> if you can be a ghost, you know, just to, to two eyes recording, then maybe you get more natural pictures. So you get the if people don't notice you, then you're just that's also good too. That's also a good approach. Mm. Um, I mean, I like you know, I, I I really sort of for me a lot of you know I like doing portraits. So I guess it's a different sort of discipline a bit. Um, uh, and I've sort of gone back and revisited subjects, but with the photojournalistic stuff. It, I think it, yeah, to turn up and just be able to record it without people noticing you, I think is a skill in itself. So it's sort of a balance between something intimate and something, um, you know, just being able to record the moment. Have you ever had someone um, object to being photographed? And yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, that's the other thing. We're so used to being filmed and photographed all the time. But I think it it's changed, you know, people are so sort of used to it that maybe it's it's different from if you were taking pictures 100 years ago or even 50 years ago, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I, you, you remember when we were out in Ivory Coast, I, I, I nearly got killed <laughs> for taking those pictures. Well, I got threatened um, by the police chief. 
Do you remember? I don't know. Actually, you weren't there. I wasn't there. You told me that. <laughs> after yeah. Yeah, that was scary. That's the only time I can really genuinely think of that I was actually scared. Is there I... something about, I wonder, then uh, people feel that being photographed is a sort of an invasion of their privacy? And I think in that case, it was people with sort of something to hide almost, you know, like people didn't want what they, you know, whatever nefarious activities they were up to to be kind of more widely publicised. Um, yeah, basically. People with something to hide, whereas other people might be flattered to be photographed. Well, you know, I was stupid. I, I think I didn't, if anything, I was probably out of order because I think people are, are entitled to their privacy. I was just trying to get something that was, you know, a bit, bit naughty, I think. Um, and that's fine, you know. As the old Robert Kappa saying, if your pictures aren't good, you're not close enough. Mm. I think, like, it depends what you're trying to do. Obviously, some people don't want to be photographed. They don't want to be seen. And we were in a, uh, you know, a strip club, basically, and there was a police chief in there, and it was a, it was a great picture, but at the same time, he obviously didn't want to be photographed. And, and uh, I found out pretty soon <laughs> you know I was basically attacked and and that's fine you know um I get it you you take the risk and mm. but in that situation I could have come out a lot worse I think you have to be careful it depends I mean should, so should you should you have spoken to him do you think in retrospect before well, he wouldn't have agreed <clears throat> uh, probably but at the same time like it depends what you know what your uh, aim is and I, I i think there are times to be brave and to get the picture that you want <clears throat> especially if you're trying to expose something mm. but i wasn't i was just you know i think i was just being pretentious and trying to sort of forget something that you know i thought would be sort of quite salacious and interesting um but you were trying to tell a story yeah, weren't you? definitely. Um, and for you, you've said to me that every the mark of a good photo is that there's a sort of story being told in by each one, sort of thing, almost. Really? Yeah, definitely. I mean, that's the aim is to is to tell a story, and you tell that you know faces and and people's eyes and. And what, and maybe just explain, like, I mean, that's always going to be quite subjective, isn't it? What, what story people are going to take different stories from different photos. But I mean, for you, maybe, can you give us a sense of, um, you know, what kind of, like, for example, this, if you just go back up again, sorry. And I was just looking at those two jet, we go down, sorry, down two guys in the field. Yeah. I mean, what for you as a photographer, when you see an image like that and you think, I've got to capture that, what what kind of story is my, my, When I get that that feeling, I want to take a picture, I get a sort of twingy, oh, that would be a nice picture. That's a nice moment. Um, and I get this sort of twitch. And then I, th and, and obviously I saw this and I said, oh, stop, wait there. We were walking back. We were camping in a, um uh somewhere and um yeah th I, this is just uh and i just saw the picture and just said stop let's you know that looks really nice let's take a picture and i had my camera on me but i get that feeling often more so recently actually because i've actually stopped taking pictures for a while and yeah. i'd really like to sort of start up again and and i think uh yeah like, you know you get you get you get the feeling and, and and that's sort of how it's been with me and that's that's how I like it and there's a difference between I guess uh working professionally and 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 just now and again getting the feeling but I think that makes for better pictures maybe is when you get the feeling and you you're like oh that'd be a nice picture but at the same time you know going back to what I was saying before is that um you know often like I've noticed that the more pictures you take, the less you remember. 
which is a sort of odd one. And I do think that has something to do with the camera being a, in the way of mem of actually memorizing <clears throat> something very sort of um, deep, maybe about just experiencing things rather than recording them. Um, and I've noticed that, that I, you know, when I've been away, if I've taken lots of pictures, I can't remember the, the places I've been, but I have the pictures. But if I don't take pictures, I have the memories, but not the pictures. And that's always been an odd one for me. Um, so it's a balance, I think. And, and uh, yeah. Good. Thank you. Um, Louis, I was just going to ask you about that sort of idea of storytelling, you know, in, in illustration. And um, is it when you when you sort of select an image or you see a particularly you know a face like you showed us there that that seems to be unique and sort of absorbingly different maybe are you do you start thinking about kind of i don't know the, who that person is you start even though you don't know them and you're you it's a fleeting moment and you're not gonna you know you're probably never going to, you may never see them again, most likely. Does it start kind of triggering thoughts and questions in your mind about, you know, who is that person? What, how did they get to this point? You know, what have they been through? What are their kind of experiences? Is that, is that something that kind of passes through your mind or, you know? Yeah, most definitely. And I think actually a good reportage drawing has to have some element of that specificity of character, because if it doesn't have that, it, is ultimately then it's just a kind of um it's just a pure caricature yeah so it has it has to have something from that experience i think what's interesting looking at alex's stuff is that you could tell there's a photographer behind there because he's getting something more than the average person could ever get from the people which i think is really interesting yeah and i think in a sense that reportage drawing ha shares that in a way where you're you're getting enough of that kind of character that it's a kind of conduit back to your own experience basically and I, i'm i'm kind of quite convinced well my book i just just submitted yesterday is very much about that drawings are really in they, they're just encapsulated experience they're they're images but you kind of recreate them um so you kind of recreate how they were made and and how they function and they're 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 always going to kind of connect to an individual in a very different kind of way. Photographs are really interesting in that sense because they're so hyper specific and they're so context determined that we understand them as these real moments and we enter them as real lived moments by real lived people in in specific places. And that's that's a very different experience than looking at a drawing looking at a drawing we're sort of conscious of it being a made thing a drawn thing something that was cr that was created when we look at a photograph it's sort of it's about the artful capture of that of a moment and and of these characters and a good photograph extracts something from the the subject and a lot of these very much do that you kind of really get some sense that there's something else kind of happening in that we get a sense of the inner world of the subject. I think that's a really, that's a, a great thing to traverse. If you can kind of, if you can enable in the image an ability to do that, um, I, what I would call maybe personhood, you know, if you can establish a sort of personhood in a drawing or a photograph, that's, that's a pretty compelling thing to do. I think. That's that's really interesting, really, really interesting to me because there's potentially so you know your yours you know like in, in one of your drawings maybe one of Alex's photos is in that sense of the kind of tip of an iceberg that is so much deeper you know like you're getting this kind of strong hint or like you, you word you used earlier sort of emblem or symbol of of, of a hugely complex individual human being right you know and mm. that you're you know and the more that can be given away by the image that you've created of them then the sort of more successful the story is that's being told i guess you know um 
Is some so I was just thinking with so sorry, Louis. What's the name of your book? Just uh, like might as well plug well, it. Well, it it will be called. Um, I had a longer subtitle, but it's literally going to be super stripped down, hopefully, but it's not completely confirmed, but it'll be Repertage Drawing, Vision, and Experience. And that's it. <laughs> that's with Bloomsbury Academic. Yeah. 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 It's it's a, yeah. Yeah. And do you know if it will be available internationally? I mean. Yeah, it will be. And, and it hopefully, I think it's going to be a little bit more reasonable because um, it's part of a drawing in series. So it's, it's, it's a kind of series within the kind of the visual arts um, wing. Excellent. So it will be, it will be um, the other, the other books in the series are quite reasonable, fortunately. So well, hopefully it'll be kind of, it'll definitely be able to access it anywhere. I imagine. Yeah. I look forward to reading that. That'd be superb. I'm sure people watching this will as well. Alex, where can people? Uh, could you um, let us know your blog? The um, oh, if people can see, I suppose it is Alexander Sebley blog yeah. dot blogspot dot com, <clears throat> and yeah, it's just something I. It's not, you know, mm. there it is up there. It's uh, yeah, it's all right. It's not very um. You know, I just I just like to put up the old picture now and again. Um, um, yeah, they're all they're all on analog film. Um, I haven't got a digital one, but I do have a lot. Um, I've done a lot of work on digital as well, but I should I'm going to sort of put something together soon. I think. Excellent. Uh, and Louis's uh, blog is life's too short for nuance dot com. Great title. Um, and the the link is in the, the chat box. Um, I was just going to um, ask you guys to sort of, I suppose, by way of finishing off. Um, I know it's a bit of a kind of stock question, but um, what are you working on at the moment in terms of your respective fields? You know, photography for Alex, obviously, and illustration for Louis, um, or you know, or if if nothing particularly at the moment, do you what kind of plans or sort of ambitions do you have for for kind of future projects? Alex, do you want to sort of start? Um, <clears throat> well, I'm actually working on a, a sort of on a music video which does use photography um, and stop frame animation, um, where I'm using images, um, photographs, and things. Um, that's one thing I am actually, you know, I'm working on at the moment. Um, in terms of, I, I do, I've, I've been uh, making plans to um, take more pictures, basically, and uh, chase some more, some more ideas, and and uh, so that's sort of I'm thinking photography-wise in the future. Um, I would like to. Uh, there's a few things I have in mind that I'd like to cover. <clears throat> um, and would that involve more traveling do you think yeah yeah, yeah hopefully um, anywhere you'd particularly like to go to that you think would be very rich material for you in terms of photography or... not off the top of my head uh, I was thinking China actually I'd really like to go to China um, or Pakistan was another one mm. Um but uh, no, not not off the top of my not off the top of my head really. I um it, it, I think I just like to sort of start taking portraits again of of people I know and and finding interesting people. I see uh, I see people people all the time. I just I did actually just recently have an exhibition in in Peckham, um which which did well, um. Also, I mean, the other thing I'm working, potentially working on is a documentary uh, about the uh, Colin Garrett, the scarecrow photographer, who um, was someone that I represented and uh, their work, did their first exhibition. Um, and I think there's more, there's something there that, you know, I could do more with. Um, I'm talking to someone at the moment, documentary maker. And we're thinking of possibly expanding on that. Um 
but yeah, you should check out his work. Um, Colin Garrett. There's an article on the Guardian actually is pretty, pretty good. Good place to start. Called "Get Off My Land," Colin Garrett, and uh, it's all of scarecrows that he took during the eighties and nineties. Um, amazing, amazing work. <clears throat> Alex, could I just ask you to stop screen sharing? Um, yeah, now. yeah, just cool. so. We can just all, yeah, that's fine. And I, and I would just like finish off by asking you the same thing, Louis. Anything, want to talk about anything you're working on at the moment, future publications or um, events or places where people can see your further <clears throat> your work? Uh, yeah, I mean, actually, probably Instagram in terms of just uh, daily musings is kind of a good place. Because um, not quite daily. Actually, it should go back to daily because I just had this big project was kind of killing me. I I can't stand going more than two days without making any artwork. It kind of makes me crazy. But um, I'll get back into that. Um, so that can you see, see some kind of things there. And that's at I think it's at Lou Netter. It's not. It's it's yeah the Instagram handle on that one. But then the thing I'm looking forward to. I've got two things in March. Very busy March. One is going to be doing a repetage comic slash manual for urban farming in Nairobi. So I'll be drawing a lot in the field with um, really successful urban farmers and community members, uh, really looking at what they do, how they approach it, and then assessing needs and a whole variety of different things, even a bit of light science. Um, so it should be really interesting. So to create a kind of really rich document, which then goes back to the community and will also involve a lot of community artwork as well. So that that that's a great research project we've got, fortunately, through the university. And then after that, going with you to Boston, Boston. Um, and uh, I'm not a massive fan of Boston, but that's another story. I don't know. I just, uh, anyway, and, it, and drawing uh and exploring the narratives and the stories of uh filipino migrants and i i really can't wait for that i think that'll be really interesting and really interesting as well to just be using drawing as a way to not just record these interviews and record some of these backstories and memories but also to kind of record the whole kind of research process the travel these different locations the kind of intimate spaces where we might be kind of talking with people engaging with people so I, i'm really i think it'll be a big challenge i've never really tackled anything kind of like that but i am interested there's a, a excellent book a really excellent book called other russias and it's by um victoria lamasco i've got it here uh, i was using it for research clearly <laughs> and um she really explores through personal narratives. She explores in a repertorial way. She calls it graphic repertage, which is basically repertage drawing, but kind of thinking of it in a, in a kind of comic book way. And I really like, I'm really drawing a lot of inspiration from that when I'm thinking about what, what we'll do, talking to kind of Filipino migrants and, and ways of kind of capturing who they are sort of, you know, visually, but also being able to kind of layering in backstory and thinking about that that sort of thing, a wider narrative. So that, so I'm, I'm excited. These are, they're both big challenges and they both happen within a three week span. So it should be, uh, be extremely mm. tired by the end of that. <laughs> so, uh, You'll be all right on the uh, night, as they say, yeah. I think I'm only back two days from Nairobi and then we go to Boston. So it's slightly ah, international deep. man of mystery here. I know, there you go. I'm there going you go. to Boston. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, oh, that'd be great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm really looking forward to it. I, I just thought actually I really want to go to Ireland. That was another another place. Oh yeah, Ireland's amazing. Well, the three of us should do it, I think, because that would be having you know I've never been. Yeah, we, we one of the plans yeah. that Louis and I have is for um a, a coast of teeth Ireland. You know, we've done England and we thought amazing. Uh, extraordinary places on the coasts you know although it'd be yeah it could even be expanded i think as well because the in inland there's some amazing that we were in the galti mountains uh last summer it was just one of the most beautiful places i've been to it's absolutely stunning you get i think you get that grand i suppose a bit like parts of scotland i guess but you get that really kind of grand um landscapes in ireland 
uh, that feel very ancient. It's a very ancient feeling place, which is which is intriguing. Which yeah, I mean, even more ancient than than England. Will we should meet yeah. again and p- pitch something like uh, you know work out a project we could all sort of like collaborate on and go to Ireland? That would be amazing. I think. I think it'd be really interesting for rep for uh, reportage kind of or like photos and drawings to occupy the same book. It'd be I think that'd be really interesting. I I I can't really think of no any anything that's done that really. Yeah, mm-hmm. that would be that would be quite cool, definitely. Worth a try, certainly. Yeah, and I have a lot of family, so we could we could stay for free. <laughs> Lots of family in Ireland, so better. Excellent. All right. Well, guys, thanks so much for um, being involved in this. It's a real pleasure to speak to you. I think really um, useful insights. And um, I I learned a lot. I think anyone watching this will learn a lot. And I think really um, exciting to see these kind of correlations between, you know, your two approaches, you know, between sort of illustration and the photography and these kind of this common ground obviously there are some differences as well but yeah the common ground I think I'd really like to kind of hear more about that you know I think that could be developed and like I say if if we did do a book which kind of brought writing and illustration and photography then that would be another way of you know really kind of exploring the possibilities of these you know bringing these different disciplines together so sounds good and not at all we'll do it again um soon enough and uh well we could be good to meet in person as well Mm. okay all right are you gonna edit this down a bit i was waffling a bit i think um no because i don't know how frankly (laughs) but um no i think that was fine i don't i think it it was that's fine definitely i know you were both both great so um but i'll i'll let you know when it um you know when it's available cool and this is for your students is that right initially yes and then i think i'll make it more widely available so yeah if with your permission yeah okay cheers then guys all right right. see you later nice us